Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Prof Trof, and we are back again with another uh, Mat Media video. This is the Island of Dwarf Dinosaurs. Like when you hear the word dinosaur, you don't really think about dwarfs, you know? Think of huge ass motherfuckers that bite you in half. They don't exist anymore because they were huge and died. Ha ha. 70 million years ago, Europe was a set of islands that were dotted around an ancient sea in between Asia and Africa. In the center of all of these islands was a bit of land that would become modern day Romania. But in the Cretaceous, it was separated from the rest of Europe by seas on all sides, keeping it protected from other ecosystems and allowing the animals and plants to live and evolve in isolation. This meant that similar to Madagascar or New Zealand today, the ecosystem was very unique, but as it was 70 million years ago, most of the unique animals found on the island were dinosaurs, and the island was called Hatsek. Hatsek? Hatsek? Hatsek would have been a lot hotter than modern day Romania, having a similar annual temperature to Florida, and the climate was arid, but despite the uncomfortable dryness, the landscape would have been coloured by many species of tropical plants and Cretaceous flowers. This is often seen in modern habitats where tropical plants can be sustained provided they have access to high amounts of water during the drier months, and there is evidence of many rivers and lakes on Hatseg. So the environment would have been littered with dry conifers and woodland, but interwoven by winding rivers and estuaries that would have shimmered under the hot and ancient sun. The abundant water and plant life would have offered a good food source for the many herbivorous dinosaurs that called Hatseg their home, and one of the most common among them was Magiarosaurus. Magiarosaurus were titanosaurs, which yeah. is the group of dinosaurs that contains the boys. giant sauropods from the Cretaceous period, including some of the largest dinosaurs known to have ever lived. But the twist is that Magiarosaurus were really small, whereas their cousins averaged around 15 meters, with some species growing considerably longer. They were similar in size to a modern day buffalo, and probably not weighing much more than one either. And they were not the only tiny dinosaurs on the island. Zalmoxus was an iguanodont, which is a group of herbivorous dinosaurs that were dominant in the Cretaceous period. Some members of this group, like Iguanodon, could grow to the size of an elephant, but Zalmoxus was about the size of a sheep. And there was even a mini armored dinosaur called Struthiosaurus, that was a relative of the massive ankylosaurs, but considerably smaller, being no larger than a pig. A pig. These small Romanian dinosaurs were confusing among early paleontologists studying these rocks, and it was actually thought that they may have just been juvenile dinosaurs. However, the growth patterns of the bones of Magiarosaurus and their close relatives were studied in 2010, and it was found that they were definitely adults and fully grown, but were just really Illegal. small. Given that these little dinosaurs were adults and that Romania was an island in the Cretaceous, then these little sauropods and several other dinosaurs found on the island must have been victims of island dwarfism. Island dwarfism happens when a population of animals gets separated from its relatives on an island, where there is a shortage of available food coupled with less predators and competition. In order to survive in an environment with less food and without the pressure from smaller. predators, animals will shrink down to better suit the amount of food available to them. In the Philippines, on the island of Mindoro, there is a type of buffalo called the Tomoro. It is closely related to the water buffalo found throughout Southeast Asia, but the adults don't grow any larger than sheep. They are basically water buffalo, but due to living on a small island have shrunk down so they needed less food to survive and to better adapt to their environment. And the same thing was happening on Hatseg 17 million years ago, just on a larger scale. Well, Hatseg Island was probably well, around the same size as Ireland, and must have not been big enough to have the mounds of plant life that were needed to support populations of giant herbivorous dinosaur. And so the sauropods and iguanodonts that were gargantuan grazers in other parts of the world at this time had to reduce in size significantly, so their food requirements were low enough to survive on the land. However, the isolation of islands also causes evolutionary trends other than just shrinking down, that can also be seen in Hatseg. Hatseg also had a creature called Baula Bondok, that was originally thought to be a raptor, but a study in 2014 has actually found that they were probably an early and primitive type bird. of flightless bird. Flying requires a lot of energy, and flying animals usually have to consume almost twice as much food for their weight to land animals in order to fly. 
and so when living on an isolated piece of land in the ocean with less competition and less predators, the ability to fly becomes an unnecessary expense, and so islander birds tend to trend towards flightlessness. And along with the countless modern examples of this happening in New Zealand and other places, Hatseg seems to have had its own flightless bird. The and the similarities it shares with raptors is actually to be expected, because a lot of the birds from this point in history did still look a lot like non-avian dinosaurs, so it makes sense that the flightless birds would as well. To this day, there is a lack of any large carnivorous dinosaurs on Hatseg, despite them being found all over the planet during the Cretaceous and having less predators would have shaped the dinosaurs of Hatseg into their miniature forms, as they would have never had to have evolved to become giants to deter an attack from another giant animal. However, even if the dinosaurs on the island had fewer predators to be worried about, they were not completely safe, as the dinosaurs of Hatseg lived under the shadow of a giant flying predator. A giant pterosaur called Hatsiogopteryx would have lived on Hatseg and would have been the king of the island, as this pterosaur was massive, having a wingspan of 10 meters or perhaps even more, Jesus. comparable to a small aircraft. Hatsiogopteryx was an Asdarkid, and shared the same strange giraffe-like proportions of its family members, and wouldn't have been that much shorter than a giraffe as well. What made this pterosaur unique though, was that they had sacrificed some of the neck length seen in other Asdarkids for a much larger and wider skull as much as 50% of their body weight may have been contained within its massive head and thick neck muscles. Now that's what we call a big brain. ...that it required to support it. Only known from partial remains, its skull was probably only a little bit shorter than Jesus, say that poor shark. Was, but it would have still been around the same size as a human. The different shape and size of the skull of these animals compared with their relatives suggests that they must have had a very different diet. As darkids were certainly capable of flight, but it is thought that they didn't hunt while flying and probably lived like storks, where they would fly to their hunting grounds but then would hunt their prey while on the ground, and Hatsiogopteryx probably did the same, but unlike any of the giant as darkids that landed in other parts of the world, when Hatsiogopteryx landed on Hatsag, it would have been unmatched by any of the land carnivores on the island, and so Hatsiogopteryx was probably the apex predator feeding on juvenile dwarf dinosaurs. And as this pterosaur Until filled the, the apex predator niche in the ecosystem, it evolved an enormous skull to accommodate the large prey that wasn't on offer for other members of its family. Although Hatsiogopteryx would have been large enough to swallow a juvenile Hatsag dinosaur whole, this didn't mean it didn't eat larger prey like the fully grown dwarf dinosaurs. The majority of animals eaten by storks, like lizards and rodents, are small enough for them to swallow whole. However, they are known to eat other larger animals, like flamingos for instance, and rather hor- That's a stork? That motherfucker looks like it's mutated into a chaos warrior. What is wrong with it? Looks like a serial killer. Looks like me when I've gone three days without sleeping and I've, I'm hyped up on fucking coffee and shit. Look at it. Look at it. It has dead eyes. It has red shit. What is that? It's growing another head. This poor thing is... Good luck, buddy. Horribly. Your uh, feathers are not gonna be the only thing that's red anymore. You rip them apart so well, they are pink, small enough to eat. I had to make the joke. The fossils of Hatsiogopteryx show evidence of anchor points for massive muscles on its neck. And although it would have needed strong muscles just to keep its head off of the ground, they are considerably larger than any other large as dark is. So it may have been able to use its large beak as a weapon similar to a stork, just on a much larger scale. So although there is no direct evidence of Hatsiogopteryx eating cow-sized sauropods, they may have been able to, and this would make Hatseg a terrifying place. So Hatsiogopteryx was just like any islander animal of today or millions of years ago, breaking the evolutionary trends of its relatives because of the vastly different challenges that it faced on its small isolated ecosystem so it doesn't matter how far back in time you go, islands will always contain nature's weirdos. <laughs> Thank you for watching. A big shout out to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. Uh, if you like content... Nice one, buddy. Uh, this was an awesome video. Thank you for suggesting this. This was pretty dope. <laughs> anyway, this was the Island of Dwarf Dinosaurs by Mop Light Media, right here. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a nice fucking day.